feeling I'm feeling extra happy and extra shady tonight. I want to thank my new subscribers and my viewers for your amazing comments. You guys have no idea how much you get me going. I mean, I love doing this so much and honestly, I've been doing it for less than two months. And when I started, I thought, you know, I'm going to do it no matter what. If five people want to watch me, that's great. You know, that's like, wow, that's amazing. <laughs> if 10 people want to share this with me, fabulous. Um, literally, it started out as something for, um, you know, a former, um, a former thespian, a former theater person um, who enjoys being in front of a uh, being in front of a camera, having a little audience, and also um, who enjoys, um, shall we say, a critique, <laughs> especially of uh, reality television. Let's face it, it's a fun subject. It's a very fun subject. And even though I can be very shady and uh, a bit merciless at times, I hope you know that it's all um, in the spirit of good-hearted fun. Um, I have a motto. I never attack the weak. Never attack the weak. Only go after those people who, you know, they just think they're amazing. They think they're wonderful um, or they're just overstepping themselves. Anyway, I want to give some shout outs before I start. Um, thank you, as always, to Eve for your comments. I always look forward to them. Um, I want to welcome Katrina O'Neill. A uh, cup of tea, you are so right about Florian's little cheating habit. Um, that's on Darcy and Stacy from the 90 Day franchise. Boy, you are so right about that. Um, Miss Julie Dip, thank you for subscribing and I loved your comment as well. Um, another welcome to Diane Bates who finds Rinna, no surprise, really annoying, as we all do. Ashley Butler, thank you for making my day. <laughs> um, I love hearing from all of you and I'll always answer. Um, if I missed anyone this go around, I'll get you the next time, but I don't think I did. Um, yeah, I, I'll always answer. So if you're a new subscriber, be sure and uh, put your name or your first name, or if you're not comfortable, your username is fine, so that I can thank you personally. Because um, I am just astonished that uh, the, you all want to come on this journey with me. And um, like I said, I'm delighted. It's uh, kind of like a little party I'm throwing, and I'm not sure how many people are going to come. But I have a, a, a huge venue. I have room for everybody. So <laughs> come on and join. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, if you could push that red button, that would mean the world to me. All right, now it's time for the Real Housewives of New York, season 12, episode 19, 21st Century Sonia. All right, okay, here we go. Um, we're, we start out, we're still in Mexico. Uh, Ramona is, she Googles anger. And she thinks she's like found the secret to the universe. She thinks she's found the way to turn lead into gold because she's come across some articles about how to recognize anger. Is anger a problem in your life? Yeah. Are you screaming at people? Are you losing friends? I mean, you know, <laughs> it's so, so stupid that she has to Google what is anger. And she's like, oh my God, Dorinda's angry. She's angry. Yeah. Yeah, she's angry. So are all of you ladies at one time or another. Dorinda is going through something. She is angry. And it's not probably coming from necessarily what you ladies are doing. It's probably coming from something, you know, somewhere deep inside her. But, um, you know, I just am wondering to myself, wow, so you don't know how to just recognize anger? All right, so. Ramona brilliantly decides to cut and paste or forward the articles to Dorinda, Sonia, and Luann. You know, 
the one thing that Dorinda has a hair trigger temper over is people confronting her about anything and calling her anything, saying you have an anger problem, you have a drinking problem, you have an anything problem. This is a terrible idea. Dorinda is pissed. So she goes into her little cache of information and articles and she posts every time someone says that Ramona was nasty to them, she made them cry, she made them feel horrible, which as you know, with Ramona's social graces, this happens all the time. So now Dorinda's on the, on the rampage. They're never gonna get through to her, basically, at this rate. Um, oh, Dorinda, uh, those pants, the pants. She says she bought them in London. Um, well, when I was a little girl, those pants were what we called Afghans, and they were crocheted uh, squares made into throw blankets that were on the back of everyone's family room or rumpus room sofa. You know, your aunt or your grandmother made them, and they came in these weird colors, and, um, you know, you, you wanted to have them in the house, you know, Maybe they were comfortable, maybe they were, uh, you know, just there so when the relative came to visit, they could see that you appreciated it. But they were never pretty. No one ever loved Afghans. And to make pants out of them? I... okay. Um, anyway. So Dorinda calls Ramona a coward for sending these articles rather than just confronting her. I mean, Ramona will confront her, but she somehow thought the articles were a brilliant idea because this was gonna cause an aha moment. This was gonna be the light bulb moment in Dorinda's life where she realized, oh my God, sometimes I get angry. Do I have an anger problem? Mm. Ramona says in her brilliant Ramona vocabulary, you're deflecting. You're deflecting. You're deflecting, Dorinda. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and then when someone calls her out on it, she says, well, you know, I have the Ramona dictionary. Oh, she does. She has her very own Ramona dictionary. She definitely has her very own way of speaking. <laughs> Um, Ramona has traumatized people with her meanness. You know, we've seen it. Um, so Dorinda's not, she's not wrong. Uh, but that doesn't mean that Dorinda doesn't have a problem. Because let's face it, she gets, uh, she gets pretty hot under the collar pretty easily. Uh, especially last year and this year, last season and this season. Okay, um, Dorinda says that Ramona's just jealous. I think we all remember going all the way back to sixth grade, how much it, 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 how effective it is when you're in a fight with someone in elementary school, junior high, high school, and that girlfriend or girl enemy or frenemy says, you're just jealous. You're just, you're just jealous. That's so effective. That always works. That always cools the situation down. So then of course, Ramona has to become manic I love my life. I, I love my friends. I have so many good girlfriends. I have a great life. I have everything. Um, and, and you know, just I just want to mention briefly, I don't even want to mention it, but I am because I just wish that the, the Housewives franchises would stop this. We don't need to know about bathroom issues, let alone see the results of bathroom issues. They have got to stop this. I don't know anyone who's watching this show who wants to see this. Um, apparently, Ramona gets so upset that a little bit of number two comes out. I can't even believe I'm talking about this, but I just want to say, please stop. It's not that I'm grossed out by bodily functions, but we're watching a, a, an entertaining television show about women who are supposed to be leading this somewhat interesting, theoretically glamorous life, although it's getting less and less glamorous in terms of The Real Housewives of New York. Um, we don't want to hear about this, and we don't want to see it. So just cut that out. Just edit all that out, and the show will not suffer from it. I just, I don't think TV needs to go there. I hope that's not where we're headed. Oh, God. Okay, um, Dorinda says all she does is give, 
and support and entertain and everyone's attacking her. Um, she is really pissed off that they're not going off on Luann. Well, Luann has been pretty chill on this trip. Has she been extremely selfish and in the past? And yeah, and just completely ignored people and everything has been me, me, me. I mean, she's always gonna be a me, me, me person. She's the Countess. Neither, she's not the Countess anymore. She's a cabaret star. And, uh, you know, she's, she's got an amazing life. And frankly, she's, um, she's really overcome a lot of obstacles to break out and find this new, exciting audience for the gifts that God has given her. So, you know. Um, Dorinda is all, oh, I love how I am. I love myself. So it's like Dorinda and Ramona are both like, I, I love my life. I, I'm telling you, I love my life. I love my life. My friends love me. And if you don't understand, you don't have to be my friend. Okay? I didn't invite you here with this beautiful house and arrange all of this for you to attack me. So Ramona and Dorinda are both basically facing off about who has the more fabulous life. Uh, frankly, obviously, neither of them are having the most fabulous life right now, um, judging by uh, their behavior. Okay. Now, they're having their kind of last dinner at the villa, and um, we've talked about Dorinda's Afghan pants. <laughs> Leah looks really cute. She's wearing uh, kind of like a lacy top and jeans. Um, she looks adorable. Uh, Luann is wearing a slip dress that looks like a nightgown. I mean, she's got an amazing body. She can carry off a lot, but um, you know, they're just, yeah, I know they're just there and it's just the girls, but I'm sure that she would definitely wear this out. I could 100% see her wearing this out. And it's just the color, it's kind of a shiny nude color. And um, yeah, it looks, it looks like she's wearing a slip or a nightgown. There's a fine line on those slip dresses, by the way. <laughs> they can easily look like you forgot to put clothes on. But uh, anyway, poor Luann. No matter how nice Luann is being to Dorinda, and Luann is being so nice to Dorinda, Dorinda is always going to come back with, a, uh, uh, I don't have a rap sheet. I don't have a rap sheet. Uh, I didn't break my way out of a police car. Uh, I, I didn't evade arrest. She's always gonna hit her back with that out of a mugshot. That's never gonna stop. I'm afraid that's that's gonna be there for all time. Um, there should be a statute of limitations on things like that, but apparently with Dorinda, there is not. Um, okay, so anyway, Luann lets it go and it, it kind of accepts Dorinda's sort of weak apology for that. This is interesting. In Leah's confessional, she has two looks that we've seen before, but she uses two looks in this particular episode. We see that kind of mesh stretch. Uh, I don't know if it's a, I think it's a dress or a top, but it's also got, it's got like included gloves. So the mesh goes all the way down the arms and covers her hands as well. And it's kind of a cute, funky look. It's fresh, it's very Leah. And then she has this other look what happened? So from the neck up, young hip Leah with the long straightened blonde hair, the cute face, not too much makeup. Leah's pretty careful with the makeup, which she doesn't need a ton at her age anyway. Um, and then she's got this, she's channeling Ivana Trump. It, when Ivana Trump was selling her line of cheap costume jewelry on Home Shopping Network, she's wearing a pink satin jacket and these earrings with these giant rhinestones and the whole look channels it's 1984 it's so unhip it's tragically unhip and it's not leah but um they're doing their confessionals at home with their own closets i think um i can't imagine someone forcing that on her i guess she thought it looked cute or maybe she was being ironic like oh this is my you know, my real New York housewives look like Ivana Trump and Georgette Mossbacher and these ladies from the 80s who ruled New York society. I don't know. But if it's not a joke, mm -mm, no, no. That it, I mean, God, I feel like that outfit's too old for me and I'm old as the hills. I mean, that, no, no, that, no. Just no. Okay, they sit down to dinner. 
Um, they talk about the coming week. There are parties, and there is Sonia's uh, grand opening of her line at Century 21, which is the upscale TJ Maxx that's uh, down, down, downtown, um, kind of across from across from Ground Zero. Oh, we're being blessed by a visit from Nigel. Nigel is my bipolar son. He, uh, he's very, very loving, and then he can turn very, very evil. Um, I suppose he must be a Gemini. My husband's a Gemini, and I have a... I'm a lunar Gemini, so we have a lot of people who change suddenly in this house, <laughs> and cats who change suddenly in this house. But, huh. He's usually all over the place, but this is the first time he's graced us with his uh, presence. Unfortunately, because of his shiny black fur, he probably just looks like a dark cloud back there. And if he reaches up again, I have a shelf up there that has all these little kind of precious porcelain things that are up there so the cats won't get them. So excuse me if I'm watching to make sure that he doesn't decide to go exploring up there. That's the kind of thing he would do. He will search out the most expensive things to knock them off, which is why I have a lot of shelves and uh, brackets for vases and things that I collect because he will destroy everything. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Ramona is bitching about the wine being bad. She says, no, this wine is... Um, this wine is... Uh, is too young and it's cold and I agree with her I mean I do not like my red wine cold red wine should be room temperature but almost any place unless you're in France and they have an actual cellar um, usually usually places do keep wine in a wine chiller a wine cooler wine refrigerator, and it's kept around should be around red wine around 50 degrees so that's going to feel, you know, cold when you start, but it opens up really quickly. Once you pour it into the glass, you just, just, Ramona, just give it a minute. It'll, it'll open up and warm up. But anyway, she is not happy. Um, and uh, yeah, she's, she's just going to be a real princessy about the wine tonight. And I think this is hysterical because she drinks Pinot Grigio, or as I like to call it, the Dr. Pepper of wine. <laughs> sort of, I'm sorry, I know a lot of people adore Pinot Grigio, and uh, you know, I, I know, I know, I know, I know, but I just, um, yeah, I'm, um, let's just say I'm not a fan. Um, I'd rather have a really full-bodied, interesting, complex red any day of the week, even if it does mean I have to whiten my teeth more because of the red wine. But um, she should stick to Pinot Grigio. What happened to her Ramona Pinot Grigio? Um, I guess it went the same way as Turtle Time. That's no longer part of who she is now that she's become so fancy. Okay. Um, they tell Leah about Ramona's texts. Um, Leah was not included in the, uh, in the text string. And um, she feels a little left out. So she wants to know what it was. She wants to know what happened. So she, uh, they hand her the phone. She goes through them. You know, she's kind of like, oh, gee, you thought this was a good idea to send articles on anger management? So she kind of understands what the, the tension was about. All right. Um, now Ramona is getting all fake. You know, she's doing her, I'm sorry. I just, you know, I just, I get really triggered. I get really triggered by these things. And when, and when people are angry, it just it reminds me of my childhood. Jesus. The childhood again. I mean... Come on, people, look, take a number. Everyone, maybe not everyone, but 95% of people had some tension or fighting in the home when they grew up. I mean, if you didn't and your home was just peaceful and blissful all the time, God bless you. Do you know how lucky you are? Um, it's part of the spice of life. <laughs> it's part of what gives us our survival instinct is having to grow up and kind of dodging verbal bullets and <laughs> various things. So anyway, um, she says that because her childhood was so traumatic and so full of anger and all of these problems, um, it just makes her 
it, it makes her try to save everyone and just make peace everywhere. Oh, you guys, Ramona is Gandhi. She just wants everyone to find peace. She wants all of mankind and womankind to come together in harmony. Okay. Um, it's interesting. No one in this group has been attacked more viciously by Dorinda than Sonia. And we've seen little montages of Dorinda's various attacks on Sonia. And yet Sonia is like, yeah, yeah, you know, it is what it is. I, you know, she is the least sensitive about it. She is the one who has been most deeply wounded. I mean, or should be most deeply wounded by some of the things Dorinda has said about her. Um, but Sonia understands that it comes from pain. It's not coming from her being in a happy place. Something's missing there. And, uh, you know, she said, look, she lashes out when she feels uncomfortable or hurt or challenged. And uh, so Sonia becomes the unlikely voice of reason at this dinner. And you know what? This reminds me that when Sonia is not drinking herself under the table, she's lovely. She has some really nice qualities. She has a really sweet side. Um, and again, I feel like the producers are just hand her drinks, you know. I'm not saying that it's not her, look, she can refuse them. She doesn't have to get so drunk. But I feel like they really are like, let's wind her up and let's see, you know, this is what people want to see. People want to see Sonia get smashed. And I'm tired of that. I would like to see Sonia next season uh, not be drinking under the table. She's, she'll still be crazy. She'll still be hitting on everything in pants. Um, but this might happen because um, I'm sure you this isn't a secret she has done some interviews from quarantine and talked about how you know she went to a spa and that's why um, you can see in her confessionals that she has this pretty dramatic new look she lost a lot of weight at the spa she stopped drinking she detoxed so she lost all the kind of puffiness um, she looks like she lost a good 20 pounds and then she had her face done um, a little overdone, but I feel like it's going to settle into a nice face that will look more like Sonia. Right now it's a little bit, ooh, because it's a big difference. But I think in like six months, it, I, I've never had a facelift. I'm trying to avoid ever having one. I'm trying to just, you know, be, use, make a careful use of good skincare fillers and Botox. But um, I know lots of women and lots of women in my mother's generation who have had many, many, many facelifts and I have seen and observed many, many facelifts. And they do, it sounds bad, but they fall. They sort of settle. They're done initially and they're like, ah! <laughs> you know, even after like the scarring is gone and you see the full, and it, you, you know, it doesn't look like obvious surgery. But if you knew the person before, you're like, oh my God, who is this? And then it kind of relaxes um, after like the first six months. Uh, if it's done well, unless it's a terrible facelift, but enough about that. Um, but the thing is, what I brought that up for is that, you know, she's not, I don't think she's drinking now. So I want to see Sonia come back next season. Absolutely. I would be sad to see Sonia go. I've always been in Sonia's corner. I, I would love to see her come back, but um, it'd be nice to see her not get as shit face drunk. And maybe meet a nice guy. Who knows? You know, then we could uh, we could have more real, or as much as it can be real, Sonia on the show. So, here's hoping. <laughs> yeah, I'll drink to that. <laughs> and they all toast to helping each other and supporting each other, which will last until the next episode, I'm sure. Okay. Luann leaves early. Um, she has to go and I guess start um, rehearsing for her cabaret show, which is going to be F. Mary Kill is the theme of the show. Okay, now they're back in New York. Um, you know, they show Leah at her work. She has an actual office with employees and, um, you know, they're showing inventory, new inventory that's coming in. Um, this fitwear, it, 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 apparently it's some new pieces that she's bringing on board. I guess she's expanding. Um, she's always just mostly done her line 
online, and now she's thinking about getting into um, stores and working with larger companies. The stuff on the table looks really cheap. It looks like really cheap um, t-shirts um, and yeah, it, 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 it does not, and hoodies and sweatshirts. Um, it doesn't look at all special. The designs are not special. The only color is acid green, which, oh God, do we have to go back to that again? Do we have to go back to 1984 again? <sighs> I was never a big fan of the day glow colors um, and they keep trying to come back. Stop, stop. Um, I don't think I've ever had any day glow green. Have I ever had any day glow green in my closet? Oh, probably, oh, probably, I'm sure, at some point in the 80s. At least a bikini. Yeah, I definitely had a day, a day glow green bikini in the 80s. Oh, sure, for sure. Okay, um, now, Ramona visits her shrink, and this is interesting. If this is how her sessions with a shrink go, she should not even bother paying them because basically she just talks the whole time, says what great progress she's making, how fantastic her life is, and she doesn't really need any help. Thank you. <laughs> Typical Ramona. Um, you know, she saw, I was started seeing you because I was feeling low. I was questioning, you know, if I needed someone. And, you know, I just I couldn't connect with a man. And, you know, um, yeah, well, Ramona, you first you need to connect with yourself, which she claims she's now learning to do, that she just loves herself. I, I just, I love myself so much. I, I don't need to love anyone else. I love myself. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, okay. I, I, I just, the way that she parrots out these words and these slogans, like, you know, I love myself. If I, if I don't love myself, what is her tagline? Of course I love myself. Who should I love? Um, I'm not convinced. Uh, and she thinks she's so hot. It's hysterical. She's uh, talking to the shrink and she's saying, you know, I'm more than this hot body and this flirtatious, sexy, sensual woman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she keeps saying, <laughs> I'm like, I'm getting uncomfortable. I wonder how uncomfortable the shrink is. <laughs> um, I'm hoping for his sake he's gay. Anyway, so she keeps saying, I, I don't need a man. I don't need a man. Really? Okay, keep saying it 10 more times and then we'll really think that you really need a man. Um, again, she psychoanalyzes herself. It's hysterical. What would you expect? What would you expect a therapy session with Ramona to be like? Would you expect her to be like, huh, wow, I never thought about that. Huh, you know, you're right. No. She's gonna she's gonna take control like she does of everything else. I, I don't need a man. I I'm amazing. I'm I'm ageless. I'm ageless by Ramona. Okay, so um Luann has a rehearsal. Sonia was supposed to come. Sonia didn't get the memo or something, so she misses the rehearsal. And uh, she says, Well, you know, I kind of ad lib anyway. And um Luann's like, um, well, this is kind of a scripted show, so I'm not sure how that's gonna work, but Luann is so cool. She's so chill this season, at least this part of the season. She's like, no, okay, well, don't worry. We'll find another part to catch up, and we'll go over it. All right. Um, that night is her launch, by the way, at Century 21, which is why she doesn't come over in the day to, uh, you know, to rehearse with Luann. I, I think she might have also forgotten or not had one of her interns put it down in her calendar. I'm sure she still uses one of those day timers from the 1980s. <laughs> she does I bet she does okay um, all right um, I find Leah's family so uninteresting I feel like this is just a giant step down for the Real Housewives of New York I like Leah I think she's fun I think she's interesting I think she does bring something to the show I don't care if she's not made of money and that she lives in a simple apartment that looks like it has Ikea furniture in it. Nothing wrong with that. And yes, I know this is supposed to be a glamorous show that we're looking for things that are more aspirational. But because the ladies are so much older now, it's kind of nice to have her. It really is. I mean, after Bethany went, um, and Bethany is kind of so intense. And Leah can be intense, but she can also be funny. I don't know. I just... I. 
I Bethany made me nervous. I loved her. I was a huge fan, but she always made me nervous. Whenever she was on, it was kind of like, <laughs> I don't know something about her. Yeah, the intensity. The intensity and the constantly kind of like almost that being on stage, having to say cute things all the time. It's kind of exhausting. Um, okay, so I just, I don't want to see... I don't want to see Leo's family. I don't want to see mom, you know, with the basically the, the, the 70 year old version of her sister's haircut with the bangs and the long hair, but gray. Um, you know, just, uh, yeah, I just, she, she decides that she's um, going to confront her mother about what the sister said that mom said she doesn't really like you, that she doesn't really like me either, but that I'm more bearable because what does she say I'm more bearable because I don't know something I put up with stuff better or I know how to get along better or something so um, so her mom says you know I yeah I mean sometimes I don't like you I don't like you when you drink and you know Leah's very sensitive about that but uh, it turns out mom is absolutely right Leah should not drink and again this is not a spoiler Leah is also going to cool it with the drinking after this season I think she probably sees some of these episodes and thinks oh god yeah maybe being bipolar and drinking is not a good combination <laughs> I mean it sounds like she's worked very hard on her um, on her bipolar condition and it's great that she doesn't even need to take meds for it if that's true um, but don't exacerbate a, 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 a delicate situation by drinking drinking is a depressant so no don't um, you know, she said she carries a lot of guilt for all the things that she put her parents through as a teenager when she was crazy and, you know, doing all these nutty things and sent to a reform school and all that. Um, and, of course, Mom says, oh, how you know how much I love you. Okay. I'm not here for this. This is not... I feel like not covering Leah's family. I feel like when Leah's not in the group, I don't really want to talk about her family because it's just not... Think about the first season of Real Housewives of New York and the second season of Real Housewives of New York and imagine if we dropped Leah's family in that season. I, no, I don't, no. And now, Sonia's launch at Century 21. And I have to admit, I told you Century 21 is one of those stores, yeah, like a, like a, TJ Maxx with higher class merchandise with let's say better labels but there's also a lot of junk there's stuff where like the beads will be falling off and there might be a hole in it and then there might be some real finds there so if you have the time it, it's fun and you can get some amazing stuff there but um, it's one of those stores where it um, the dr I, I said it before it's one of those stores where the dressing rooms smell like feet I think that's the best description. That pretty much describes, you know, a Lomans, a TJ Maxx, a Marshalls. Lomans and TJ Maxx? I, I, I don't even know if Lomans exists anymore, but Lomans and TJ Maxx, this girl shopped there since I became an adult. And um, even after I had more money, still continue to shop there because you can find amazing things. Uh, so I'm not putting them down at all, but I'm just saying those stores are always a little bit janky a little bit you know kind of like disorganized the racks are disorganized there's no real attempt at display you know all the money goes into it, it, it it's all about low prices it's not about a beautiful shopping experience it's not like when you go into a private dressing room at Neiman Marcus and they bring you you know a glass of champagne I miss those days but I don't miss the bills <laughs> I don't miss the credit card debt <laughs> All right, um, and, and really they make it look quite nice. They do quite a good job putting up the um, beautiful photos of Sonia and displaying the clothes. Listen, I have never seen Century 21 look that nice. I haven't been there in a few years, but it hasn't been that long. And I have never seen Century 21 look that fancy as they had it done up for this launch of Sonia's, Sonia by Sonia Morgan collection. And again, I think her clothes are pretty. Uh, she, they have that look of that kind of middle quality, not cheap, but middle quality, Chinese factory made dresses that they will buy for like $20 and sell for $100.
they, it has that look. Um, but some of them are really cute, they're pretty. Um, so I, I wish her well. And um, I know that she, she did not design these, but she picked well. And sometimes that's what it's all about, is just picking well. I mean, most celebrities that have clothing lines, someone shows them a bunch of designs and they pick, they don't sit there and sketch it out and design, you know. Anyway, I mean, rarely, very rarely. Okay, you know what? It's, it's really nice. This, this night is really all about Sonia, and I feel like it's the first time this season we've had something that's just been Sonia. And again, I've always been so much on her team. I am so much, I'm so behind her. And um, she's so, she's just so happy. She's beaming. You know, this is something she has, this is the closest that she has come to really making something stick, to bringing something to fruition. Okay, will she continue and follow through with the work that it takes or just kind of shunt it off onto her kind of mediocre, you know, investors that she has? If this is going to work, she's going to have to really kind of hustle and promote it. So we'll see. We'll see if she can do that. Um, I hope now that she's re-energized with her detox and, you know, everything and being fit and having more energy, I hope that she does make this work because I think it's a line that is affordable to a lot of women, but it's a little bit aspirational. You know, it's not like too lowbrow. It's, it's, it's very pretty. And I think that she could do quite well with it. Um, so hopefully it will end up in some other places other than, you know, Century 21, which is very limited. They just have a few stores. Um, oh God, Ramona's laugh. She's kind of wandering around in the background and I forgot she with that when she is, um, when she is on, you know, when she's on stage, which means when she's at a party, I just be Ramona. She has that laugh. <laughs> it's a chihuahua. She has that awful laugh and it's so fake, but that's Ramona. Um, and she claims to have a drink named after her at the Hamptons, and she's and she's trying to she's trying to teach the bartender how to make her drink, and it has to be just right. Okay, um, Sonia's speech. Um, Dorinda and Luann are sincerely happy for Sonia. They really look, they 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 look really sweet. They look like they're sincerely um, delighted for her to have this moment. And in a moment that was definitely staged by the producers, not that Ramona wouldn't do something this stupid, Ramona leaves her phone on and the phone rings and of course she has to act like it's taking eight rings for her to figure out how to put it on I can't answer right now. I think that was completely faked. Not that she wouldn't do something like that, but yeah, pretty sure that was faked. Then Sonia gives her speech and um, she thanks Luann, Dorinda, and Ramona. And then she remembers to add Leah, which is nice. And you know what? I feel like everyone's happy. I feel like this is a nice, positive, upbeat moment. And for one second, I feel like everyone really wants her to work hard on her project. And everyone is holding a good thought for her and supporting her. And I think Sonia has earned this moment. So slow claps to you, Sonia Morgan. And I really wish you success with this. All right, um, that is it for this episode. And um, I believe we only have one more. I have to say, um, this has been an interesting, uh, this has been an interesting season. We'll, we'll kind of do a, we'll look back on the whole season. I'll probably do a, a special where we just kind of look back on the whole on the whole season. But um, obviously, you know, this has been a season of a, a lot of changes. And um, a lot of people have said, oh, this is the beginning of the end for the Housewives of New York. You know, I'm not sure because there's still just some characters in there that are just too good. There are aspects of these ladies that I just will always probably find entertaining. And no one drives me crazy. I mean, they do, like Ramona drives me crazy, but in a good way. I mean, she's Ramona. She's ageless by Ramona. She's, how can you not, 
be entertained by her. She's so ridiculous. And the thing that I love about her is I think she's so unself aware. I really don't think she's putting it on. I don't think she realizes how silly she is. I think she honestly believes she is the hottest thing in any room and she is amazing. And, um, you know, I, I know that there's also deep insecurities there, but I feel like it's a it's a half half thing. Half of her is deeply insecure and afraid of being alone, and half of her really is. You know, I know to my core. You know, I, I'm amazing. I'm incredible. People love me. I love my life. <laughs> but I, anyway, I do have a certain fondness for Ramona, and and certainly Dorinda. I, yeah, is she nasty? Yeah, is she a mean drunk? Yeah, she can be horrible, but there's also things that I really like about her. I I am very fond of Sonia, as you know. Um, I feel like Luann is, is, is working on herself. I feel like I am seeing improvement there. And even when she's at her worst, and she's me, 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 she's still interesting. And now Leah is a good kind of addition. Um, you know, Tinsley, okay, she, she had her time, she did her time, that, that was enough, um, and, you know, God bless. So I don't want to say this show's over, oh, I said I wasn't going to do this whole looking back thing now, but we will do a whole thing that we'll look back on specific moments of this season, I'll add that. So I hope you enjoyed the recap of this episode, thank you so much as always for joining me. Um, please remember to like and comment. Love your comments so much. Thank you everybody for being so sweet. Um, I really feel like, oh, I, honestly, everyone is like a little gift. It's like unwrapping a little present. And I feel the same way every time I get a new subscriber, um, which is why, again, I ask you, please put your name or your first name, or if you're not comfortable, you can put your username down in the comments because I really want to thank you in writing and also personally because I'm a new content creator, but I, I don't imagine that I will feel, I would feel any different no matter how, you know, what happens with this. Again, I'm doing it because I love it and I'm doing it because I'm, I threw this party and I don't care how many people come, it's gonna be fun if there's a hundred of us, it's gonna be fun if there's a thousand of us or how many, it doesn't matter. I wanna kind of keep it the same feeling. So, um, on that note, I want you to take very good care of yourself. I want you to be good, but not too good. And I'll see you next time. Bye.